Hi, everyone. And um, this is Hasti Rahidi, and I'm very excited to go through this workshop with you all today. Um, no matter where you are, whether you're, uh, you know, back in schools or you're still at home, I'm sure this is going to be a fun project that we can all work on in a safe manner. Um, this work is brought to you by the University of California, Irvine, and the CCAM, NSF MERSEC, uh, which is, stands for, you know, concentrated uh, materials, active materials, and that's where we study a lot about different materials and the interfaces and their importance. In the following slides, I will explain the project, and also at the end of the slides, I have some links to these different centers and things that we are doing in case you guys are interested to learn more. So today we are going to observe salt crystals with a fold scope. So let's begin. So first of all, we want to know what salt really is. So I'm sure you guys are already familiar with salt, but let's think about it. Salt is one of the oldest food seasonings. So first of all, there are different types of salt. And you guys are familiar with salt as a seasoning. It's also a mineral composed primarily of sodium chloride. And, uh, you know, um, and also there might be some other elements in salt and usually the crystal structure of salt uh, is rock salt. For you guys that are not familiar with the crystal structures, materials that are organized and are crystallized are, gener are generally, you know, composed and repeated uh, in certain different types of structures. And so rock salt is one of those structures where the sodium chloride or uh, salt belongs to. Also, we know that salting is an important method that people used in the past to preserve food. So where do we see different types of salt nowadays? So we all know that there is salt sometimes on the table. Where else can we see the salt? So in the ocean, for example, in this picture in Dana Point, California, you, you can, I mean, I'm sure you guys have tried going to the sea and do the swimming and actually see that there is some salt and the water tastes salty. Also, one other very interesting place where you can see the salt is the salt lakes. There are salt flats all over the place in the, those lakes and actually they are used a lot for you know, producing salt. For example, in this picture on the right, you can see Death Valley Salt Lake in California. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next slide, we want to talk about how salt is made. But first, we want to know what is salt made of? So if I show you the periodic table of the elements that you, I'm sure you guys are already familiar with, you can see that we have different you know, uh, elements sitting in here. And each of those has you know, an ad uh, atom. There are atoms that they have certain amount of neutrons, protons, in the nucleus and they have electrons surrounding the nucleus. So if you look at two main elements that are um, basically circled in red in this um, table, we can see first on the left, the sodium atom, and second on the right, the chlorine atom or Cl. Each of these has certain amounts of you know, you know, uh, protons and electrons around them. And how salt is made is the combination of these two elements that they come together and sodium loses one of its electrons and chlorine receives that electron and they create a bond that's called a, an ionic bond and they form an ionic crystal structure. However, this structure is mostly ionic and there is not a pure 100% ionic structure. So um, I'm sure if you're interested, you're interested, you can learn more about different types of bonding. Uh, there are other types of bonding, such as metallic bonding between metal elements and covalent bonding. But in this case, the majority of our bonds that are formed are making the salt are the ionic bonds. Moving on, we want to see, okay, where is the salt really coming from? So, you know, evaporating seawater or the lakes that have the salt helps us harvest crystalline salt. So you see in this picture, that there are some people trying hard, making their best, you know, doing their best to provide us with some salt that we can use in a lot of applications, including our daily meals. So moving on, we want to look at the objectives of this workshop. First of all, you are going to learn about salt. You already learned a little bit about salt. You're going to go to one deeper level, 
they're going to use a fold scope. A fold scope is a type of microscope that I'm going to explain shortly what it is. After that, you're going to grow salt crystals from a salt solution, and you are going to see what's called the process of crystallization. After that, we are also expecting to observe the microstructure of those salt crystals using our fold scope. So not only we become familiar with the fold scope and salt, we also use the fold scope to look deeper and go to that one deeper level of our understanding about salt. And we also can think about factors that may or may not affect the growth of these crystals, which are going to be really exciting. So moving on to the next slide, I'm going to tell you what a fold scope really is. So on the right, you can see a fold scope. This fold scope has been assembled. So you guys are have, have should have already or will be receiving kits where you can you know, use the instruction. I'm gonna explain later, but you can use this instruction to pr prepare your fold scope, uh, just like the fold scope on the right in this image. And so this is the fold scope on the, or the other words, the paper microscope. It's affordable, it's accessible, and it has two micron resolution, which is pretty amazing for such a thing. And using some very normal lenses and all these pieces of paper, you're actually able to observe things that are that small, which is pretty amazing. There's a huge community working on these fold scopes nowadays that people make these fold scopes, you know, buy the kits or receive the kits and they assemble the kits and they try to look at different things like flower petals or onion skin or different types of things and objects of interest using this fold scope. So today, when you're learning about this fold scope, you can also get, grab your fold scope, move around, see the things that are interesting near you and try to look at those as well. You just need to make sure you prepare your sample accordingly and properly. And by going to this website over here, the microcosmos, there are a lot of examples of people, you know, using their fold scopes on a daily basis. And they also have a cool Instagram page. I'm sure you can find it where they share interesting results and uh, you know, discoveries. So moving on, we want to see when you receive the kit, what's really in your kit. So you will going to have the fold scope. There is an instruction on the left, you can see in the picture that you can use to uh, assemble your fold scope. There are glass slides, there are needles, and there is this uh, pipette and some other materials that are used for your sample preparation and practice of working with the fold scope. More information has been provided in this um, you know, instruction uh, paper. At the same time, you are welcome to go and uh, look at different types of videos in YouTube where people explain how to assemble fold scope or how to you know, use your fold scope properly. So I'm going to show you how to do it but feel free to go and look at YouTube. There are plenty of resources also on the Cosmos website that I have introduced already that can help you with that. Moving on, what else do we need? So we do have our fold scope. Assuming you guys already worked around and you have time, go over, work around and try to make your fold scope, assemble it. What other things are you gonna need? Obviously, we're going to look at salt. So we are going to need salt. You can see here in the image we have we use some cooking salt. You also going to use those transfer pipettes that are used for sample preparation. We provide those in your kits. You can use a blow dryer if you have one at home, but if you don't, no worries. You can just let things dry instead of using a blow dryer. So that's totally okay. But if you have one, go grab it right now or actually in a few seconds when I give you some time, I'm gonna give you some time to go and grab the things. Also, you're gonna need hot water. So you can use a kettle or a pan to you know, heat up your water and make sure you have a container that's safe enough for you know, you know, working with that hot water. And we also need a spoon because our goal is to make a salt solution. We are going to dissolve the salt in the water and then try to evaporate the water to see what is going on. So moving on in this slide, this is me in Bowman's lab at UC Irvine and I'm trying to um, talk over this video and tell you what you should do. So first of all, uh, here uh, we are in the lab and we have some of these things that you're gonna need. First of all, you need your fold scope ready and prepared. And so also in your kit, you will receive a few things 
that has already mentioned, including the instruction notes where you can learn how to uh, use your fold scope and how to assemble your fold scope properly. In addition to that, we are going to use some other things. For example, we are going to use this lens and this is how you're actually, this is what the cool thing is about because you can use that lens. There is an extra lens that you can uh, basically attach to your phone if you have a smartphone and you can use that to connect your phone and attach it to your fold scope. And then you can capture images or videos, which is pretty amazing. And I'm gonna encourage you at the end to do so. After that, we have this container that is safe. And then we have some water. We're gonna heat up this water and use it. Also, we do have some salt. So that's the major aspect of our experiment today. And in addition, we have a spoon. You can use a clean spoon as long as you can just, you know, use it to make a salt solution in the hot water. You also have received these pipettes in your kit. You have these slides, paper slides that are going to be used for sample preparation. And last but not least, you have, you can, this is completely optional, but you can use color. You can use pigments or you can use edible color, food coloring like blue that we have in this image. In addition to that, you can, if you have, use a blow dryer, as I already mentioned to you. So hopefully you can have time, go gather your stuff around and we are going to start soon. So moving on, before we start the experiment, we want you to stop for a moment and think about what do you expect to happen? What, do you, what is going to happen? We are going to dissolve salt in the water and heat it up naturally or using a blow dryer. And what are our expectations from this? So think about that. Think about what's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen? And what do you think is going to be the result? And what's going to be different if we use a fast drying or a slow drying method using a blow dryer or natural drying speed? What, how is that result going to be different? Are our crystals going to be similar or different and how and why? And there are some steps that are going to follow, three main steps. First, we prepare our sample. Then we dry the sample, which is the, technically the last step of sample preparation. And at the end, we load an, our sample in the fold scope and observe it. So microscope, I've mentioned microscope here because fold scope is a type of microscope. Um, but I'm going to explain more about different types of microscopes, and I'm sure you guys have already been exposed to some materials and learned a, lo a lot about different types of microscopes and ways by which we can observe things that are impossible to observe with naked eye. So first of all, uh, we have part one where we are preparing the sample. So what I'm doing in this video is that I have all the materials ready and handy. So I have this um, glass, uh, basically, sorry, the paper slide, and I use these plastics uh, that are coming in your kit to cover one side of that um, paper slide. And this slide is very convenient because we are using very small amounts of so, uh, you know, solution. You also have some slides that there are bigger uh, spots or spaces available, but I think this one is really nice also, you can add some salt. So I've already added some salt to the hot water here. Um, so make sure you are not uh, touching a very hot container and not um, make sure you are being safe. Um, you can grab a little bit more. I have already did it in this video, but I can grab a little bit more salt using my spoon. I'm going to, you know, dissolve that salt in my water and you can Keep steering until you are certain that you have certain amount of salt, you know, uh, dissolved in your water. After your salt is ready, it's time for you to use the transfer pipette to grab some of those solution and put it in your sample prep um, area, which is there. So yes, you are going to grab some of this solution over there, as you can see by pressing that pipette, I'm collecting some of the solution and I'm going to put the solution in the right place. I apologize, the video is kind of zooming in and zooming out, but I think you will get the sense of what's happening. I'm trying to 
use the pipette to put one drop of the solution on each of these uh, areas. And at the end, what you're going to have is something like this. You have all these spots filled with this salt solution. So now you are either going to wait for this to completely dry naturally, or you are going to basically, um, you know, dry it using the blow dryer. After that, so um, now feel free to pause the video, go back, uh, go work on your sample, and then come back to the rest of the video. Okay, now that you started again and you have your sample um, in place, you're going to dry the sample. If you have a blow dryer, if you don't, you can feel free to watch the rest of the video and look at your sample later with it when it's fully dried. Just make sure to look at this and see what we do at the end of the sample preparation. So here I'm using this blow dryer to dry out the sample fully. You got to make sure the sample is fully dry. And at the end, when it's dry, I'm going to use another of those plastic wraps and put it on the other side of the specimen In here. Make sure it's, you know, fully covered from both sides and our crystals are going to stay there. And uh, now um, it's your time to pause the video. If you have a blow dryer, um, go and start um, drying and heating up your sample. If you don't, you can just wait uh, for it to naturally dry and you can move on to the next slide. Okay, now that you're back, you are going to see how I'm trying to load my sample into the fold scope. So I already have my sample dried and ready. I used two other um, paper um, slides, as you can see, and I put them on the bottom actually, and I put our sample uh, paper on the top. And this is the way I put the sample in the full scope. I gotta make sure it's flat and this sample of interest, which are those you know, areas where we put our solution and we dried it are at the center of our fold scope. And this is necessary because we need light to go through these lenses and uh, make us able to actually look at things. So um, make sure you're doing that and then you can play around with your fold scope to focus and get some nice images and maybe share them with us. So there is instruction in the, micro, uh, in the kit on how to do that. And there's also instruction on how to put it on your phone, just like I did. You're going to use that other lens that I showed in the beginning and put that on your phone so, so that you can take images. So now feel free to stop the video and go put your sample in the full scope and um, try to see if you can capture some images. Next step, we are going to look at the results. Let's see how the results are. So, this is the results part on the left. We can see a um, basically a, a film, a movie of how, what has happened. So one of my uh, amazing lab mates, Shin Wang, she actually produced this video. So this is a video that's not in real time. She fastened the, you know, the pictures in the video for us to be able to observe and really visualize uh, what's going on. So if you look at this video, you can see that there are some crystals over here that are starting to grow suddenly in a very interesting way. So it's clear with your eyes right now using this video that was captured using Foldscope with Shin's phone, you can see the growth of crystals. On the right, we can see two different types of crystals grow. First, on the top, we see crystals that were dried naturally. And on the bottom right, we see crystals that were dried with a blow dryer. And obviously they look different, but why? That's something that we want you to think about. And we are going to also talk about later in the next slide and provide you with some information uh, about it later. So moving on, this happened. We had dissolved the salt and we heat it up. We see the growth of crystals. But what is really happening in the material? So if we assume that we have salt in our water, what our water was in a container when we added salt, right? So when we dissolve those salts um, particles in our water, we are going to have sodium ions and chlorine ions, and we also have hydrogen molecules in our water. 
So after we start heating up this uh, solution, or basically what happens is that the water starts to evaporate. And what that is, is H2O. So the molecules of H2O start to evaporate. And what you end up having at the end is the structure or the crystal structure called rock salt, which is actually your salt. So now if you want to look deeper, these atoms, right? These guys, uh, the HEO started evaporating and your green chlorine uh, ions and sodium ions in yellow are forming your crystal structure. And if you want to look deeper, you can actually see that in this crystal structure, if you look at one tiny part of that crystal structure under another microscope that has you know, a good resolution capability, we can actually see that these yellow and green atoms are forming this crystal structure, which is highly ordered structure. And you have sodium ions as you already had in your solution as well as your chlorine ions, but they are sitting in a very organized way. And that's why we call this a crystal structure. Crystals are some types of materials that have a long range order, meaning these atoms are sitting near each other and close to each other in a certain way, and they are being repeated one after another unit. So moving on to the next slide, I'm going to actually show you uh, a not state of the art or a very advanced microscopy technique. And in this study, in this paper, People also looked at salt like us, but they used some advanced electron microscope, which is one of the most advanced microscopes that is available in the world right now. And what they are capable of doing is not only to see the crystal growth that we observed using Shin's video in the previous slide, but also they look at atoms and how the atoms are forming. So if you go from the left to the right, you can see that the sodium and chlorine that were, you know, on organized and kind of, you know, all over the place in a solution format, they go to a very organized format and they form a crystal. And so this is after 40 milliseconds. So they took a picture in the electron microscope before and after this reaction took place. And you can see atoms already organizing over here. And I want to encourage you to look at this scale bar over here. So this scale bar is showing us that this is one nanometer. So your atoms that are over here are around 10 to, so the radius of those is, is something around 10 to the minus 10 meters. So what, because one nanometer is 10 to the minus nine meters. So you can see how small that really is. And there's really no way for us to be able to see this, except for these amazing microscopes that are giving us this capability which is actually pretty interesting. And I highly, highly encourage you to learn more about it if you're interested. Uh, I find it pretty exciting myself. Also, you're going to look at a video, what these guys did. So um, I don't know if I can play this video. Yes. So here you can see that as the time goes by, the solution of the salt is starting to form some organized crystals in the microscope. So this is amazing. This is actually a process that's taking place in the microscope. And by heating up that holder, they're actually observing the crystallization of salt atoms. And again, I want you to notice how small these atoms are given this scale bar over here near these images. So this is pretty amazing. And uh, that we can nowadays look at atoms and they're really small. So I also want to talk about microscopes and basically how they were, you know, changing over time and their evolution. On the left, far left, we have the fold scope that we use today and we were able to look at salt crystals and their growth and learn some basics about microscopy as well as basics of material science of the salt crystals. We also have optical microscopes and we can see a lot of cool things with optical microscopes on the far right we can see one of the advanced electron microscopes in, in our school, uh, at, at, which is located at Airborne Materials Research Institute. We have a lot of different amazing microscopes that are allowing us to do research on materials at very small scale, such as atoms, similar to what you observed in the previous slide, which is pretty amazing. I highly encourage you to look at their website. I have put the link down here. And so just to give you a sense of how different 
the resolution or the ability to observe things is if in these different techniques are, if you look at this slide, you can see different features, right? From right to the left, things are getting smaller and smaller. You go from over here, uh, so you know, your honeybee to somewhere like hair from a 15 millimeter to around 60 to 100 micrometer, 10 to the minus six meter. And then you go to viruses and DNA that are around nanometer, two nanometer and even hundred nanometer. So there are different techniques. With naked eye, you can obviously see the bee. You can see things up to hair, up to six micron, up to some micron. So our fold scope resolution is about two microns. So it's allowing you to see things that you cannot see with your naked eye that are over here up to two microns. With an optical microscope that works with light, you visible light, uh, we can see things that are smaller, relatively smaller. Uh, so technically fold scope is a kind of optical microscope. That's why they, they are pretty much in the same category, have the same capability. And using an electron microscope, we can observe many smaller things up to nanometer scale. We can observe atoms of different materials. The examples of this slide are mainly biomaterials, but we can also look at a lot of other cool things like metals and atoms and metals and ceramic materials that are used in batteries and fuel cells and things like you know electronic cars and that kind of stuff is what we are really interested in. And um, the novel, uh, coronavirus that I'm sure you guys have heard of um, is also something that we can see using an electron microscope. So using different types of electron microscope, depend on, depending on what the size of coronavirus is within the range of the viruses, we were able, the scientists were able to look at the virus and that was giving them a lot of, you know, good information about how to start solving the problem with the coronavirus that we have nowadays. So that's really one of the importance of the microscopy. So to do the final discussion, I wanted to mention that you guys can think about how do the salt crystals form? What was the difference between a naturally formed and a dried form uh, with a blow dryer salt? Which one is clearer? Which one is opaque? Which one is larger or smaller and why? Also, if we increase the rate at which the hot salt solution is cooled uh, by putting it suddenly in the refrigerator, what is going to happen? What are your thoughts? What are the differences between sugar and salt? So I'm assuming you have some sugar at home. If you grab that sugar, and if you do the same thing and look it under your fold scope, how different all those, all those crystal structures are going to be? What is sugar made of? So that's a question for you to answer in case you enjoyed using your full scope. You can walk around, look at different things. Me personally, I really like flowers. So the first thing I did, I started looking at flower petals. You just need to make very, you know, super uh, thin layers of different types of materials that you want to look at. So I highly recommend you that you use your fold scopes and try to be creative with your fold scopes and share your findings with us. We are planning to uh, put that somewhere in our center's social media and hopefully share your findings with other people. And last but not least, I wanted to thank you so much for joining us today for the workshop. I appreciate your time and attention. Uh, so does the anteater scientist over here, uh, which is UC Irvine's mascot. And here are some useful links for you guys uh, in case you uh, didn't get them or I didn't clearly explain about them during the presentation. Feel free to reach out to us and our center and learn more about the goals of the center as well as the microscopy opportunities and what we do. Thank you so much. I wish you a wonderful uh, day. Bye.